This video has been sponsored by KiwiCo. How dangerous is an earth dart? Shot faster than the speed of sound. A while ago, I built an air blaster capable of shooting nerf darts very, very fast. It took me two months of failures and doubts, and also, also a bunch of money to make it, but I somehow ended up designing a functioning pneumatic system that shoots stuff at 600 psi. Which is quite a lot, supported by a wooden stock and covered by a 3D printed shell. And all that makes a powerful blaster that shoots multiple times with a single charge. The problem is that the nerf darts I used in my video were blowing up because of the pressure, not allowing me to even get close to the full potential of the blaster. So this time, besides the original nerf darts, I also got better foam darts, half the length of the original ones. Then a few 3D printed projectiles, and since I also want to find out how powerful my blaster is compared to a classic rifle, I'm also gonna shoot 50 cal lead slugs, and last but not least, 50 cal muzzle loader bullets. The plan is to measure the velocity, the energy, and the damage against the targets for each one of them. To help me with that, I got Bryce and Adam from Ballistic High Speed. They have very pretty, That's worth more than a house. and very expensive ultra slow motion cameras. So we're gonna be able to capture great shots and see things that wouldn't be visible with naked eyes and any other cameras in the world. The first projectiles we're gonna test are gonna be the foam darts. And before shooting the targets, I wanna measure how fast the blaster can shoot these things. And also find out if my nerf blaster can actually shoot supersonic stuff, because right now, I'm not completely sure about that. When something breaks the speed of sound, you should hear a loud boom called sonic boom. And only at the very end of the last video I heard something like that. Which made me believe I shot supersonic, but I never actually measured the speed of that shot. So now, we're gonna do exactly that. Also, the blaster is looking kinda weird right now, and that's because for this test, I made some modifications to improve its performance. First, I connected the air tank directly to the QEV, rather than keeping it below the barrel connected through a hose. This should dump all the air into the valve even faster, and in theory, increase the velocity of the projectiles. Then, I also removed the rear tank. Doing that sacrifices the ability to shoot multiple times with a single charge, but there is a good reason I did it. For this test, I want to be able to shoot each shot at a different pressure, based on the projectile we use and the velocities we measure. And it would take a while to disassemble the rifle and change the regulator value each time. But by not having the tank, the regulator is easier to access, and since there is so much less volume to fill, it's also easier to pump to the desired pressure for each shot. And for the first shot, I wanna try to recreate the one in which I heard the sonic boom in the previous video. Blue nerf darts and 430 psi. Bryce and Adam are installing this board, which is gonna help us measure the velocity. Knowing the distance between the lines, and measuring how long it takes the projectile to travel between them, we can measure the velocity. And so, shot 1, 430 psi. So, right there, for a split second, we're getting a normal mock cone off the back of the bullet. See it expanding up? Yes. So it's, it should be very close to the speed of sound. And after Bryce made a few calculations and me and Adam were there for moral support, we got the official speed. 1,087 feet per oh, second. No we're oh, so wait. close. So close. Oh, wait. This means with the first shot, we got 97% of the speed of sound. So now what we do, like, do I lower the pressure a little bit or do I increase it even more? Well, the bullet is still mostly together, so it might be able to take a touch more pressure. So I tried shooting with 500 psi, but the dart was even more damaged than before, making it slower than the first shot. So then I tried again, but with a lower pressure, hoping the dart wouldn't break. But it simply flew even slower. So, the 430 psi of my first shot is actually the best combination for these darts, actually confirming what happened in my previous video. The reason only one of these two shots was supersonic though, even with the same pressure and projectile, probably comes down to the weather and a mistake I made. When I shot supersonic, I was filming in the middle of June, with hot weather and dry air. Now, it's pretty cold and it rained yesterday, and since cold and humid air is much more dense, it also slows the projectile down, 
Well, the second reason is that to fit the blaster in the shipping box, I cut out a few inches from the barrel, and that might also contribute to a lower velocity. So, the maximum speed of the original nerf darts for this test is 1087 feet per second. But I'm not gonna leave this place until I record a supersonic shot. So, before moving to test the damage against the targets, I gotta prove that this thing actually shoots supersonic stuff. The problem is that the next projectiles I'm gonna use are gonna be very powerful, but they're also heavier and slower than the nerf darts. So, the last chance I have to record a supersonic shot is using the half-length darts. This should be slightly lighter, and the materials used should be a much better quality than the original nerf darts, so my hope is that they're gonna stay in one piece, even with higher pressures. Bryce also had an idea to improve our measurement. I think the nerf material slows down so quick in the air. I think if we just look at the first inch or two out of the barrel, it might be supersonic and then slow down to subsonic. So we're gonna do a really high frame rate, really zoomed in and just look at the exit. And I think if we calculate just okay. that speed, it might be supersonic. Because you can see the shock diamond and the mock shock, cone yeah. and everything. So I just think the nerf is so light that it just slows down really quick, so we'll yeah. try that. So, for the first shot with the half-length darts, I tried with 520 PSI. No yo happened. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard that before. <laughs> and at this point, I kinda started to lose hope. It's apparently even worse than the previous ones. The good dart, the one that was supposed to hold higher pressures, completely blew up, and the cap came out after the body. Did I just traveled a few thousand miles, twice, just to prove that my supersonic nerf blaster does not shoot supersonic? How is that possible though? Yes. 1096. 1096? Yeah. Oh, the cap? The main part of the... The body? Yeah. Okay. 1096. Now that changes a few things. We are 20 feet per second off. Yeah, this because the speed of sound changes with air temperature. So the temperature of the air right now, the speed of sound is 1111 11 instead of 1125. So, so we're, so we're close. even closer than we think. Why are we not getting it though? We just gotta keep trying. Yeah, I think so. So then I tried lowering the pressure to 500 PSI. But it didn't change much. We always got very close, but never supersonic. But then I randomly tried shooting at max pressure. 590 PSI. And this happened. Whoa! Did you hear that though? This actually felt quite promising. Now we just gotta wait for Bryce to do all the calculations. It is one of those awkward framing where it's like either on one side of the frame or the other, but I'll do it again. Come on Bryce. Hey. <laughs> Say it. Say it. <laughs> Say it. I'm Say trying it. my best here. Say it. The average is eleven thirty-five. I would say that either touched the speed of sound or, or was just above. I think. I think. That's good enough. That's yeah. good enough. <laughs> that's, good. <laughs> that's good enough. Later, the software confirmed the shot was actually 1170 feet per second. And so this is officially the shadow and the shockwave of a supersonic nerf dart. Which means we can move to test the damage against the targets for the nerf darts and the powerful projectiles. Starting from the weakest one, the nerf darts. I'm gonna shoot all the shots against the targets using the maximum pressure of the blaster. And since we already know the nerf darts would blow up with that pressure, we wrapped shipping tape around the dart. And the first target is gonna be a ballistic gelatin block. Blocks like this allow to measure the penetration of the projectiles into a substance similar to muscle tissue. And with this, begins the damage test. Oh, it is. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> it's nice to see the nerf dart stayed in one piece, and it actually penetrated a few inches into the gelatin, which is a few inches more than what I expected. And even though I doubt it's gonna be lethal, it's worth testing it anyways. Shot two, nerf good. dart yeah, versus okay. ballistic dummy. I'm ready? ready? Yep. 
I mean, this shot would certainly hurt, but it's definitely not lethal. But what about the plastic darts? These bullets are 3D printed plastic, with 100% infill, and they weigh about 6.5 grams. And the first one I'm gonna shoot is a sort of experiment. Firearms barrels are usually rifled. This allows the projectile to spin in the air, stabilizing the bullet and improving both range and accuracy. Now, since my barrel is literally just a pipe, I wanna see if a rifled projectile would still make it spin when I shoot it. My plan is to shoot three 3D printed projectiles against the ballistic gelatin and the best one of them against the ballistic dummy. Also, things are starting to get kinda serious now. So we're gonna use shields against ricochets from now on. Shot 3, rifled 3D printed dart versus ballistic gelatin. Did it break in half inside of it? No way. That'd be kind of cool. Oh, it's he crazy. broke. He broke in half That's inside cool. of the ballistic gelatin. That's scary. That's kind of cool. That would hurt. That would definitely hurt. But the reason the projectile snapped is because the rifling didn't work at all. The bullet hit the gelatin on its side, causing the impact to split it in half. Now, I want to try shooting the smooth version of the same projectile and see what happened with that one. Okay. Fire. Oh, wow. That's what? way in there. Oh, that's nice. That's much better than before. Oh, much better. Look how perfect, perfect. that is. That was that looked just like a bullet. That's so cool. That that would definitely go but inside of you. This time the dart penetrated quite a bit, and you can actually see the trajectory into the gelatin. That's cool. The bullet traveled at a speed of 915 feet per second, carrying an energy of 252 joules. And so we are definitely into lethal territory. Now this is the last 3D printed dart before moving to the heavy ones. This one flew very straight in the air. I can't tell if it was actually spinning, but it flew at a very similar speed of the previous one. And as soon as it hit the gelatin, it completely shattered inside of it, which I actually find kinda cool. Anyways, the smooth dart was the fastest one. And so, I'm gonna shoot the dummy head with it. This thing has bones, and I have no idea if the plastic is gonna just bounce back, or actually do something to it. But I guess, there is one way to find out. Oh! I got pieces of zombie on me. <laughs> oh, yeah, nice shot. <laughs> oh, that went in. Oh it my sure god. Did. Yeah, it did. Definitely didn't come out. Yeah, but this was with the 3D printed ones. Yeah. It cracked all the way through that like frontal lobe. Is that a crack? Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah, this zombie is not making it. And the projectile hit while tilted, so it didn't even have maximum piercing power. If it was perfectly straight, I think it was... You got some on your forehead. It really? splattered back on you. <laughs> At this point, I only got the metal projectiles left. And, you know, seeing this thing I made actually working, it just makes you feel great. And so, I've been looking for a gift for my little nephew, capable of somehow letting him experience the same feeling. And then, I found out about Kiwiko, which does exactly that. Basically, it's a subscription box that delivers hands-on projects for kids. But, and this is important, this is not just a random toy. These are projects that are, first of all, fun, but also teach skills like problem solving, creativity, or even engineering, like, check this one out. This is so cool. I should wait for my nephew, but I kinda wanna do this one. 
Like imagine giving a gift that kids are excited about every single month and you're actually doing them a favor because they're learning something very valuable while also having fun. Kiwico is great for all ages, offering five clubs that explore interests like culture, technology, and art. And my favorite is Kiwico Labs. It's all about hands-on science and engineering projects kids can rebuild and experiment with, plus immersive digital content to spark curiosity at every step. So if you're looking for something that's fun, educational, and keeps kids busy in the best way possible, try this. Go to kiwico.com slash mikeshake or use my promo code mikeshake for 50% off your first grade. Seriously, this is a game changer. All right, back to the video. So this is a 550 grain 50 cal lead slug. To put it in perspective, one of these weights like 36 nerf darts. Okay, fire. Yeah. I felt the recoil on this one. Just over halfway. Just like yeah. No way. That looks like it flew pretty good. It's clean. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been deadly. <laughs> and even though the bullet tilted, probably because it wasn't spinning, it penetrated through the gelatin way more than the previous ones. The lead slug flew at a speed of 480 feet per second carrying an energy of 381 joules. And I'm pretty curious to see what 381 joules are gonna do to the dummy head. Okay, high speed's ready. Can I shoot? Fire. top of the head you can see the shockwave of the energy going over the top oh yeah, yeah you see that oh the my skin God. is separating yes. off of the skull these pieces and it's so like intact hardly deformed yeah that was good that, that was really was very good. good the slug also kept flying and he made a hole in the wooden wall now, the last kind of projectile is the 50 cal muzzle loader rounds. I didn't even know this thing existed before today, but they look mean, and I'm very interested to see what kind of damage they're gonna do to the dummy. The sunlight was getting weaker by the minute though, so we quickly shot the ballistic gelatin, and the round started spinning inside of it, as if it was water, and then came out of the side of the block. The muzzle loader traveled at a speed of 550 feet per second with an energy of 252 joules. And now we're gonna see what happens to the ballistic dummy. And well, I was expecting the damage, but I wasn't expecting the dummy to completely blow up. I got hit with bones over here. So, I guess I can say the not so nerf blaster definitely works. Definitely. Huge shout out to Bryce and Adam from Ballistic High Speed. Without them, this video would have not been possible. And if you like my stuff, I believe you're gonna like their videos too. So, check them out. Also, thank you for watching. If you like this video, subscribe and watch another one.